Well, I saw that your artwork for today was, is that Brianna Taylor? So I assumed we we're going to talk about that case and the riot rioting that's happened. Yeah. And we never really talked about the Brianna Taylor case in detail. And, uh, I think it's worth going over what the facts of the case are and then going over the proximate causes of the protesting, just so people understand what is and yeah. isn't true about the situation. Is that? I actually would like to review the case with you because mm. uh, I've since heard things that it's weird. I've heard people get conservatives giving facts about Brianna Taylor and her boyfriend and facts of the case. But in with those facts are some things that I'm not sure if they're true. And secondly, I understand giving facts because we're living in a we're living in a culture and a society now where the media is selling us a certain narrative and we're often not getting the facts. Um, but at the same time, I don't think I don't think that there's a need to try and sully her reputation because of things her boyfriend did. She was innocent. There's her murder was tragic. You know, her death was tragic. And I, and I, I don't, I don't like the idea of trying to, um, trying to denigrate her, but I do want to know what the facts of the case are. So yeah, we could go I, I don't, I don't think it's really appropriate, appropriate to denigrate her. And certainly she didn't uh, deserve to get killed by the Not police, at all. Right. Like, so, um, like that, that I think is, is clear to anyone who's fair and, and rational. Um, I think it is worth noting just as a life lesson, um, you hang around with bad people, you're a little more likely to have bad things happen to you. And she certainly did cavort with people who were likely to get her into situations like that. And that's not smart, but it doesn't mean she deserved to die. And certainly, right. Um, and certainly it doesn't justify anything that the cops did. However, uh yeah so let's can i just well i mean i can i have a little i went through and kind of put together the pieces as i could understand them based on all, all the information so i can just go over it if you want yes um, i would like to see some what okay. you i figured you put something together yeah, so I know. thank you i know you figure that it's fine ah <laughs> oh, she's she's rolling her eyes but she relied on me doing it. So I'm I thought, No, I did rely on you. Well, I had a dinner party last night and I thought Carter's probably preparing right now. Or were you playing Dungeons and Dragons? No, I was preparing. Um, okay. uh, actually, no, I mostly prepared this morning. Uh, last night I was probably playing Smash Bros. But uh, I, I relaxed last night because I was going to prepare uh, during the time that we ended up going live with Gabriel. And then... The Gabriel conversation was so exhausting that I was like, I'm just going to sit sit on the couch and play Smash Bros. Uh, so yeah. that's what I did. <laughs> okay. So um, on March 13th of this year at 1240 a.m. in Louisville, the Louisville Metro Police Officers, three Louisville Metro Police Officers, um, Cosgrove, uh, Hankison, and Mattingly, um, served a warrant quote served a warrant to brianna's residence now there's a few people that we need to there's three people that i think are are key to know there's other names but there's only three that are key to know to really understand what happened one is uh jamarcus glover um he was an alleged uh drug dealer he had actually been in prison previously he was heavily involved in drugs and stuff and was the target of of investigations uh has been arrested he was one of their primary targets. Um, the other person to know, obviously, is Brianna Taylor. Brianna was Glover's ex-girlfriend, but she wasn't just his ex-girlfriend. Um, according to police documents that, that have been, I guess, leaked to the media or obtained, um, so Glover used her phone number and address for various things. So, like, he... He had his car towed, and he used her phone number as his own, um, and the, the, he used her address as his address. Uh, I, their bank records on the bank statements, he used her address as his address, and um, mail addressed to him was found at her residence. Now, maybe they just lived together, and that's why, but she was living with a guy who, if they did live together, and that's the reason he was still using her address, um, then... 
it's reasonable that that will be a place that gets searched. Um, there's also a question about whether she was managing money for his. According to phone calls that he made, that Glover made from jail um, to the mother of his child, he said, quote, the officers, quote, took my car. They got that bank statement out the armrest. Boom, it got Bree's address on there. And he says, Bree got down like 15 grand. She had the eight I gave her the other day. She picked up another six, he said. Uh, then a moment later, he told the woman that, quote, Bree been handling all my money because she been handling my money. Uh, she been handling shit for me and because it ain't just me. So um, there is there's some involvement potentially there. Um, okay. And then the third person to know is Kenneth uh, Walker, who was Taylor's current boyfriend, who was at the residence during this thing. So here's the timeline. The cops go get his search warrant. Now, by the way, I, can I just pause just personally and say this? I hate the war on drugs. I don't think the war on drugs should exist. All of this could be stopped if there wasn't a war on drugs. So, but if you're going to go with war on drugs as a thing, then you hire police officers to enforce it. And what I'm about to say is what transpires. So, um, so they go get a search warrant for Taylor's residence. Um, the, uh, according to the warrant, um, they saw Glover get a package from Taylor's home. Um, and obviously he used his address on documents. Uh, the search warrant does include her home address her apartment number, photos of her apartment door. Um, it includes her name, her birthday, her social security number, all listed on the warrant. It's untrue if you hear them say, like, they got the wrong house. That's not true. She was on the warrant. Her place was on the warrant. Um, so that's, this was... Okay, well, that's an important point because that was one of the first things I heard about this and believed for a while to be true mm -hmm. was that they got the wrong house. So I did not realize that... They didn't Her get the wrong house the at all. Warrant that they, nope. Yeah, okay. Uh, Jamarcus Glover's name was also on the warrant, as was a guy named Adrian, or guy or girl, I don't know who, Adrian Walker. I don't think there's a relationship between Kenneth Walker, her boyfriend, and Adrian Walker. Uh, I think just a common last, common last name. But all three of their names, Glover, this other Walker, and Brianna, were all on the warrant. They also executed a warrant that same night, about 10 miles away from her home, uh, at another house on Elliott Avenue in the Russell neighborhood, that's where they found and arrested Glover. So it sounds like they did simultaneous raids on a couple different properties, which is what you do. Um, there is some argument between uh, Taylor's attorneys and the police about whether or not the police falsified the, to change the time on the raid for the other house. Uh, it says 1240 on the document, but it looks like the 40 is like light and they're saying, you just added the 40 later. Uh, it was really 12, so you knew 40 minutes before, because they raided Brianna's at 12.40 also, right? So, they're like, you knew you had the guy already, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter, because they're going after evidence, so just because they had Glover doesn't mean they don't still go after Taylor's residence. Anyway, um, so basically, simultaneously, this is happening. It was a no-knock warrant, but police did knock. There's not dispute about that, all right? Uh... Taylor's boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, said he heard pounding at the door. <laughs> That's called so what's the, knocking. May, can I stop you there and ask you, for anyone yes. like me who wants to know, what's the difference between a warrant and a no-knock warrant? And oh. is the act of them knocking, even though they didn't, I guess, presumably didn't have to knock, d does it now make it no different than if it had not been a no-knock warrant? No, it's not no different. Um, so th I, there is some nuance here. And so they knocked. They claim they identified that they were police officers. He claims they never, he never heard an identification. Mm -hmm. So I think a regular warrant, you knock, you say, hi, we're the police. You know, we have a warrant. Um, you know, the person, you know, I, I guess you can force your way in, but I don't, I don't know if you can just barge right in in the middle of the night with a, you, you don't just knock and go in. I think a normal warrant, like they serve and talk to you and, right? Uh, this is my understanding. I'm not, a, I'm not a cop, but knocking doesn't like make it not a no knock warrant. They still have, they're still behaving in a different way than they would for a normal warrant. Let's put it that way. That much okay. is true. Anyway. So they knock on the door anyway. Uh, they claim they said they were cops. He doesn't hear that, but he hears the knocking. He does call 911 and he and Brianna Taylor get up out of bed. So there's another narrative going around that she was shot in her sleep. She was not shot in her sleep. She was shot in the hallway. He got up. He went to the door. 
And as the police were coming in, he shot them because he thought that they were intruders. So he fired a shot, one shot at 12.43 a.m., according to the arrest citation, and officers fired back. He struck uh, Mattingly, the officer Mattingly, in the leg. Um, and the officers fired back with more than 20 rounds, and Taylor was in the hall and shot on kill. Did he fired first? Is that yes. disputed? No, it was not disputed. Okay. All right. So just to go over some false info. She was not killed in her sleep. They didn't have the wrong address. Uh, her name was on the warrant, right? Um, so that's basically what happened. I mean, that's kind of the, the gist of what happened. Now, in my opinion, <laughs> Kenneth Walker was totally justified in shooting. Completely justified in shooting. Someone breaks in my door in the middle of the night and I don't know that it's cops 100%, I shoot them. Like, or I shoot at them. Maybe I get killed or whatever, but... What, what the hell was he supposed to do? Um, so I, I think he was absolutely justified in, in shooting. Um, and likewise, if you're going to have laws that say cops can do this, they're kind of justified in shooting back at that point. <laughs> like, you are asking for a firefight by saying, cops, in the name of the war on drugs, you're allowed to kick people's doors open and, and go in guns blazing. Like... If that's what you can do, then you're asking for gun violence. Like, that, you're asking for a war. That's what you're asking for. Um, and I know there's arguments about this safety crap. This is one of the things that bothers me. There's like, well, for the cops' own safety, they have to do that. It's not safe. If you're looking for a person, you can wait till they come out of the house and arrest them when they go to the 7-Eleven. Uh, if you're looking for evidence, you can wait till they leave and sneak in or break in afterwards if you've got a warrant. There's not a reason to scare people who are potentially armed in the middle of the night and go in guns blazing. That's not for cop safety. I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, but if we didn't have the war on drugs, none of this crap would happen. Um, somebody says, so, um, just just to clarify, just there's a lot of chat. You guys yeah. are active today. Some, but somebody says the cops did not go in guns blazing. What are you talking about? Uh, I think that's a matter of semantics. Carter doesn't mean they were firing first. They didn't fire means, first, but they went with, they, they yeah. yeah. I, I he, Yeah, you're right. Sorry, go ahead. He just meant they went in with guns. Yes. And he, he already stated that uh, Keith fired first. Yeah. And, 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 uh, Kenneth, and also when Kenneth. I say... They go in with guns blazing. I'm kind of speaking generally about a lot of warrants. Like, we've now ele elevated the conversation. We went through the facts about Breonna Taylor, and we've elevated the conversation to these no-knock warrants in general and the war on drugs in general. This is what happens when you do this kind of stuff. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I get I get the ups upset about it. Um, but if <sighs> if you want these laws you're going to have people enforce those laws and this is what you get when you like when the laws are such that this is how they're enforced and this is what you get then like you're going to have mistakes like this because you know and this and then we're going to now we'll just get to the grand jury because I think this is why the grand jury didn't uh didn't indict so there was two things that happened recently one was the settlement so the city of Louisville settled with the family. They reached a twelve million million dollar settlement with the family of Breonna Taylor. Um, and this was a civil suit, right? This was a civil suit. Um, they also promised some uh, series of police department reforms. This is the largest settlement in the uh, Louisville police history. Uh, and it's important, you know, when people complain about the settlements, uh, I don't see a reason to complain about settlements. A settlement is a mutual agreement. So it means it's not a verdict. It, they didn't take it to someone and then justice wasn't done. Both sides agreed that this is acceptable to us. So it's a settlement. You can't, you can't be like justice wasn't done. Her, her family decided justice was done. They decided to, to stop and settle for this amount. That's what a settlement is. It's a mutual agreement. Um, so, so that was the civil suit. And then on Wednesday, we learned that the grand jury... Um, they decided that criminal charges should be brought against only one of the officers involved in the death. But um, instead of relating to killing uh, Brianna, the charges for endangering her neighbors with wild shots, want three counts of wanton endangerment in the first degree for, quote, endangering her neighbors with wild shots. So there was no, the, the grand jury decided that there wasn't sufficient evidence to charge 
any of the three cops in the wrongful death of Breonna Taylor. And again, this isn't the system keeping these people down. A grand jury is regular citizens. Like normies were selected on a grand jury. This is these are these are your fellow residents who were on the grand jury that decided that these cops shouldn't be there was enough evidence to indict them for the murder of Breonna Taylor. And I think the reason is the law allows the cops to serve the warrants in the way they did. They followed the rule book and they were fired upon as you would expect and as they were deserved to be fired upon. Uh, and I would have fired upon them too. Um, and they shot back as you would expect. So I think, I think from a legal perspective, the problem is this is all the way it's designed to work. It, it worked the way it's designed to work and then an unfortunate thing happened. I don't like the design. And if you're gonna protest something, I would say stop protesting law enforcement and protest the laws.